I mean, I could tell a little Marc Andre stories all day. Please do, yeah. My first memories of Marc Andre was seeing him come running out of the forest in Squamish, barefoot with no shirt. He just broke my speed record on the Grand Wall. And I was just like, who is that guy? The Grand Wall might be the most iconic route in Squamish. And I'd climbed it the fastest bottom to top. I mean, speed records are a game, and they're definitely not the most important thing in climbing, but I do love speed records. And then this local kid, who I'd never really heard of, did it faster. I was soloing the route quite regularly, and one time I just decided to see how long it would take me. And then I got to the top and checked the time, and it was like, oh, it was like two or three minutes faster than the established record. And suddenly Alex Honnold came back to Squamish to get his record back on the Grand Wall that I'd kind of like unintentionally broken. <laughs> I was like, oh man, I'm gonna go fast. He like totally destroyed it. Like, you know, he cut my time in half. I think I did like quite a bit faster. Here I am in God Ray. Uh... Enough so that it discouraged Mark from ever wanting to try again. <laughs> <laughs> Mark is a very, very driven climber, but he doesn't care about accolades. He doesn't even care if anybody ever knows what he's climbing. I've always approached climbing from slightly more of an athletic background. I grew up climbing in the gym, and I think of it more as a sport. But he definitely cares about, I don't want to say the spiritual component, but he cares about the experience in the mountains and the journey and just wants to have a good time while he's out there. And I, I really respect that. I mean, it's, it's uh, yeah, I mean, obviously it contributes to performing at such a crazy level.